Hi everyone! In this video, we will provide a detailed step-by-step -step guide with tips on how to write a bug report. Thank you for joining the video, and let's get started! This video is a part of the Udemy course Manual Software Testing Interview Q&A for QA. For more information, check the description below the video. To write a bug report effectively, you first need to understand what it is. A bug report is a formal document or communication that describes a specific issue, problem or unexpected behavior in software, applications, websites or digital systems. Typically, users, testers or quality assurance teams submit bug reports to notify developers about issues they've encountered while using the software. Writing a clear and effective bug report involves following certain rules and guidelines to ensure that developers can understand and address the issue efficiently. You can pause the video and check the huge list of fields that can be in the bug tracking system. The specific fields and their format may vary depending on the bug tracking system or project management tool being used. In this video, will provide a detailed guide on how to write a basic bug report with eight of the most commonly used bug report fields such as Title Summary Steps to Reproduce Actual Result Expected Result Attachments Environment Bug Severity and Priority Assigned to And we will show how to add them to the bug tracking system. To write a bug report we need to start with finding a bug. For this demonstration, we'll use our website, in particular the test practice section, which was created specifically for testers. To access our website, open a web browser such as Chrome. Enter the keyword Testing 101 into the search engine like Google and click on the link Testing101.net. The Testing 101 website homepage will open. Navigate to the Testing 101 tab in the navigation menu. Scroll down the testing page to find the test practice section and click on the option labeled 1 Test and Registration Form. The Test Registration Form window will open. Our test registration form includes the following fields full name, email, gender, I agree to terms and conditions. Please note that all of these fields on the test registration form are marked with an asterisk. This indicates that they are mandatory and must be completed before you can successfully submit the registration form. If any of these mandatory fields are left unfilled, the registration form should not be submitted. The system will highlight the fields in which an error occurred. To reproduce a bug, begin by inputting a full name, test into the full name field. Next, input an email test at gmail.com into the email field. Then open the gender drop-down menu and select any available gender from the list. Leave the I agree to terms and conditions checkbox empty and click on the register button located above the test registration form. After clicking the register button, a notification will appear. Thank you for registering for our event. See you there. This notification indicates that the registration was successful. As you remember, all the fields in our form are mandatory. Therefore, we have identified a bug since our registration was successful even without filling in one of the fields in the registration form, namely the Terms and Conditions field. Now, let's consider how to document this issue in the bug report. There is a variety of bug tracking systems used by testers to manage bugs. One of the most popular is Jira. Jira is a widely used project management and issue tracking tool developed by Atlassian. It is designed to help teams plan, track and manage their work efficiently. Typically, when you start working on a project, you are granted access to the project's bug tracking system in order to review working process and track the project tasks, issues, communicate with customers and manage your work efficiently. We will demonstrate this using the example based on the test project that we created in Jira and named Test Project, 
as the Jira is the project management and issue tracking tool that uses on the real projects the most often. Keep in mind that the specific fields and their format might differ depending on Jira project and they are customizable. Jira Project X has a different bug report field than the Jira Project Y. Once you have access to Jira and corresponding project, open it and click the Create button in the center of the header navigation menu of the Jira board. Clicking the Create button will open the Create Issue window. Now, let's explore how to write the key components of the bug report based on the issue encountered on our website. The first component that must be included in the bug report is the title or summary. Writing a clear and effective title in a bug report is crucial because it's the first thing developers see and can significantly impact how quickly they understand the issue. The title of a bug report typically consists of a concise and descriptive phrase or sentence that summarizes the issue being reported. A well-crafted title should provide a clear and immediate understanding of the problem. For this reason, the first element that should be included at the beginning of the bug report title is tags. In bug tracking systems like Jira, tags are often used to categorize and organize bug reports. These tags provide additional context and metadata beyond the primary identifier, which is typically the bug report's title or issue key. Title tags aid in efficient searching, filtering and management of bug reports. Some common types of title tags include platform tags, component tags, environment tags and others. Let's add title tags into our bug report for an issue we identified on our website. The first tag is the platform tag. Here you specify the platform or device where the bug occurs. Since we encountered the issue on the desktop, we include the desktop tag in the title. The next tag is the component tag. Here you identify the specific component or module of the software where the bug is located. As you remember, we were testing the registration process on the website using the test registration form. This means that our testing component is registration. And you add the registration tag to the title next to the first tag. Our next tag is the environment tag. Here we specify the environment in which the bug occurs, such as Windows, Mac OS, Chrome, Safari, development or production. In our case, since the website where we found the bug is live, it is in a production environment. Therefore, we add the prod tag to the title next to the second tag. The tags for our bug report title are now prepared. The next step is to create a concise and descriptive title that summarizes the issue. We recommend writing a bug report title using the what, when, where format. This format provides a clear and structured way to convey essential information about the issue. Start with what. Begin the title with a brief description of the problem and answer the question, what exactly happened. This should capture the core aspect of the bug. Avoid vague titles like problem or error and instead provide a brief overview of the issue. In our example, we observed that a user can successfully register on the website without filling in the terms conditions mandatory field. Therefore, here's what occurred. The user is successfully registered. Include this information in the title on the back report immediately after tax. Next, you proceed with writing the title with the when element. This involves providing details about when the issue occurs or under what conditions and can help developers understand if the bug is context-specific. Based on our example, we notice that the user successfully registers on the website when the terms and conditions field is not filled in. So, when it happened is without filling in the terms and conditions field. Include this in the title immediately after addressing what happened. Following when, we continue writing the title with where. This means specifying where the issue is happening, which is especially crucial if the software has multiple components, modules or platforms. 
Based on our example, you observe that the user successfully registers on the website when the terms and conditions field is not filled in on the registration form. So, where it happened is on the registration form. Include this in the title right after addressing when the issue happened. Once you have written the text and answered the questions what, when, and where regarding the identified issue, the title component of the bug report is complete. Let's proceed to the next component of the bug report, which is steps to reproduce. This section provides detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to reproduce the bug, including specific actions, inputs, and settings used. Writing clear and concise steps to reproduce is one of the most crucial aspects of a bug report. It assists developers in understanding the issue and replicating it for debugging. There are several suggestions that we recommend following when creating useful steps to reproduce in a bug report. Our first suggestion is 1. Use a numbered or bulleted list. You should organize the steps in a clear, numbered or bulleted list format. This makes it easier to follow and ensures that each step is distinct. Our next suggestion is 2. Be specific and detailed. You should describe each step in a clear and detailed manner. Include every action, input or click required to reproduce the bug. Imagine you're explaining the process to someone who has never used the software. The level of detail in the steps may vary depending on the project. In some projects, the steps are written in great detail, while in others they may be less detailed. To understand precisely how bugs are documented in your project, here's our next suggestion. 3. You should review 5-10 bugs that were submitted in the project you are involved in. This will help you adapt to project-specific practices and write clear and useful bug reports, making your work more effective. 4. You should write steps to reproduce more detailed, because as you learn how to write the steps in more detail, you can shorten them, but vice versa, it doesn't work. Developers vary in their familiarity of the project. If a person has been working on the project for two years, they have their own experience, credentials, and other insights about the development of the website or application. In this case, it most likely does not need detailed steps to reproduce. However, if someone is new to the project, they need detailed information. The bug report must contain all the data required for a newcomer to reproduce the issue without additional assistance. A bug report is a document visible to the entire team. Test cases, checklists, and test plans are mostly used by testing teams. In contrast, bug reports are reviewed by developers, business personnel, and stakeholders. This is a representation of your work. Writing detailed steps may take a few extra minutes, but it appears significantly more professional. Suggestion 5. Verify reproducibility. Before submitting the bug report, you should double-check that the steps are accurate and consistently lead to reproducing the bug. Sometimes you may overlook certain steps or write steps that do not result in reproducing the issue. Double-checking the steps will help identify and resolve such issues. Now, let's attempt to write the steps to reproduce for our bug report in Jira. As you may recall, the fields in a bug report can vary depending on the project. In some Jira projects, there is a dedicated field for steps to reproduce, while in others there may not be the separate field for it. If the steps to reproduce field is not available in your Jira bug report, typically you can write these steps in the description field. Let's begin by writing the steps to reproduce in the description field. You can enhance their visibility by highlighting them in bold. Next, start writing the steps to reproduce the environment where the bug was discovered. The bug was identified on our website. Therefore, the first step is to open it. Begin numbering the steps and write Step 1. 
open the testing101.net website. Once the environment is accessed, it's essential to include every action, input, or click required to reproduce the bug. Don't assume that the reader is familiar with the software or the context. Write the steps as if explaining the process to someone unfamiliar with the application. As you're already aware, detailization of steps to reproduce depends on the project you're working on. If you're working on a project where the steps are less detailed, your next steps may look like this. Step 2. Open the registration form. Step 3. Fill in valid data in all fields of the registration form, except the terms and conditions field. Step 4. Click on the register button of the registration form. Thus, your steps to reproduce in the bug report will consist of only four steps, such as 1. Open the test in 101 website. 2. Open the registration form. 3. Fill in valid data in all fields of the registration form, except the terms and conditions field. 4. Click on the register button on the registration form. However, if you're working on a project where the steps are more detailed, you should write the following steps in your bug report. Step 2. Click on the Testing 101 tab in the top navigation menu. Step 3. Scroll to the Test Practice section of the Testing 101 tab. Step 4. Click on the One Test Registration Form option. Step 5. Input a valid name such as Test into the Full Name field. Step 6. Input a valid email such as test at gmail.com into the email field. Step 7. Choose an option from the gender drop down menu such as mail. Step 8. Click the register button. Thus, your steps to reproduce in the bug report will consist of 8 steps to reproduce. 1. Open the Destiny 101 website. 2. Click on the Testing 101 tab in the top navigation menu. 3. Scroll to the Test Practice section of the Testing 101 tab. 4. Click on the One Test Registration Form option. 5. Input a valid name such as Test into the full name field. 6. Input a valid email such as Test at gmail.com into the email field. 7. Choose an option from the gender drop-down menu, such as mail. 8. Click the register button. The more detailed steps to reproduce component of a bug report is complete. We've written steps to reproduce that are clear, actionable, and facilitate efficient bug investigation and resolution. This helps someone who has never used the software to follow your steps and reproduce the issue without difficulties. Let's now proceed to the next components of the bug report, the actual result and expected result. Similar to the steps to reproduce field in the bug report, some Jira projects have dedicated fields for the actual result and expected result, while others might not include them. If Jira project doesn't include actual result and expected result fields, you usually write these details in the description section below the steps to reproduce. Let's explore actual result field. In the actual result, you should explain precisely what occurred when you followed the steps, including any error messages or unexpected outcomes. This explanation is essential as it helps developers understand the issue and compare it to the expected behavior. Here are the tips to keep in mind while writing a bug report. Usually, the actual result either mirrors the title or provides a title with a more detailed explanation. Let's document the actual result in your bug report. Insert the term actual result into the description field below the steps to reproduce and consider highlighting it in bold for better visibility. Scroll to the title field of the bug report and copy without tags. Then paste it into the actual result of the description field. Basic actual result of the bug report is ready. On some projects, it is enough that the actual result is equal to the title. The other projects require to expand the actual result with additional details about the issue. 
If you want to expand the bug report title of the issue, in addition to the existing information from the title, which is the user is successfully registered without filling in the terms and conditions filled on the registration form. You can also include information about any notifications that appear during the reproduction of the bug, such as successfully registered notification is displayed after trying to register. And the actual result will be the user is successfully registered notification is displayed after trying to register without filling in the terms and conditions filled on the registration form. This information will provide more context for the bug report and will help in better understanding the problem and addressing it correctly. The actual result is now complete and our next step in writing a bug report is to document the expected result. In the expected result section, we describe what should have happened after performing the steps mentioned in the steps to reproduce section if the bug didn't exist or after the bug is resolved. The expected behavior in a bug report is typically defined based on the intended functionality or the requirements of the software or system. Some common sources where you can find the expected behavior are use cases or user stories, input from product owners or stakeholders, software specifications, user requirements, and business or functional requirements. It's important to note that in some cases expected behavior may not be explicitly documented, especially in Agile, where project management approaches are not linear or rapidly evolving development environments where the dynamic and constantly changing conditions within the software development. In such cases, discussions with the stakeholders and product owners can help clarify expectations and you may need to define the expected behavior collaboratively based on common understanding and goals. Expected results specify any expected outcomes such as successful actions, visible changes, or feedback messages that users should encounter. Let's write the expected result of our bug report. As you remember, our test registration form includes a terms and conditions checkbox that is mandatory. It means that without checking the checkbox, the system should display a clear and user-friendly error message, such as This field is required, near the unfilled required field, and registration shouldn't be successful. Let's add the expected result to the bug report. Insert the term expected result into the description field below the actual result. Highlight it in bold for better visualization. Then, write the expected result as follows. An error message is displayed near the terms and conditions required field after trying to register without filling it out on the registration form. The actual and expected results of the bug report are now ready. Let's proceed to the next component of the bug report, that is attachments. Attachments is visual evidence such as screenshots, videos or recordings that demonstrate the bug. Including attachments in the bug report can provide valuable context and evidence to help developers understand and address the reported issue effectively. We recommend always adding video attachments to the bug report for the following reasons. Reason 1. Use of documentation by business people. Business people may not like or understand documentation and when they prioritize bugs, it's easier for them to watch video. Reason 2. Long-term bugs fixing. Some bugs go unfixed for months and then become important. The video will even help you remember what and where you did. Reason 3. Much better to show video on meetings. Very often a situation arises when it's necessary to determine whether it is a bug or a feature. In such cases, having a video to show during meetings is very convenient, instead of scrolling the screen and clicking. Let's attach the video screenshot to our bug report example. Firstly, create a video screenshot following the steps to reproduce. Then, add the attachment to the bug report. There are two ways to do this. One is to click on the Browse button in the attachment field and select the desired file. 
Another one that we recommend is to add the attachment right after the actual and expected results in the description field in order to enhance the visual presentation of the bug report. Place the cursor right after the actual result, find the Add Image, Video or File button in the top navigation menu of the description field and add the desired attachment. The video attachment with the actual result will be added for the bug report. If you have clear requirements, you can also add an attachment with the expected result. When the bug report description with steps to reproduce, actual result, attachment and expected result is ready, you can proceed to write the rest of our bug report. The next step is to fill in the environment field. In the environment field, you provide details about the environment in which you encountered the bug. Include information such as operating system, for example Windows 10, Mac OS, Big Sur, browser and version, if applicable, application version, if applicable, any relevant hardware details. Let's add the environment to our bug report. You encountered the issue on the Windows operating system and the Google Chrome web browser. Therefore, specify Windows and Google Chrome in the environment field, mentioning the version of the Google Chrome browser that you use. To check the Google Chrome version, locate three dots on the top right corner of the Google Chrome browser screen and click on them. In the open menu, find Help About Google Chrome Chrome options and click on it. The desired Google Chrome version will be displayed on the screen. Sometimes the error can only be reproduced on certain versions of operating systems and web browsers, so it's important to specify the full version of the browser. The environment field of our bug report is now complete. Let's move on to the next components. Bug severity and bug priority. Bug severity is a measure of the impact and seriousness of a software bug or issue on a system or application. The severity of a bug in a bug report is typically assessed and assigned by the person who is reporting the bug. This individual could be the tester or QA analyst, product managers, product owners, end users, customers or the developers. Depending on the project, there might be different severity level definitions. Different companies or teams may have their own criteria of severity measurement such as trivial, minor, medium, critical, blocker, etc. Assigning the right severity to a bug is crucial for effective bug triage and prioritization. Determining the right severity is a difficult task, as our conclusions must be based on something concrete and not just on one's own assessment as it could introduce bias. Ideally, if the project has a table of measurement criteria for each type of severity with detailed definitions of what each severity means in a particular project, in this case, the tester can determine and assign a severity for a specific bug based on this criteria. However, if there are no criteria for measuring severity, Severity will most likely be determined by a customer or the product owner, as they often have a broader perspective on how a bug aligns with the product's goals and user expectations. Let's select the severity for our bug report in JIRA. The severity field of our project consists of trivial, minor, medium, critical and blocker options. As you are not familiar with organization's severity level definitions and this definition is absent, you can make an appropriate severity level assignment based on your evaluation. Our registration form submits without accepting the terms and condition field, which is mandatory. Terms and condition protect both users and service providers, promote transparency and help maintain a safe and lawful online environment. Therefore, we can put the severity of the issue as critical, although this does not block our registration process, ignoring or violating TNC can have legal consequences, making it crucial for both parties to understand and abide by them. Select critical severity in the bug report, 
but keep in mind that customers or the business are better suited to understand the impact of the reported issue and may adjust the severity based on their expectations. Let's proceed to the next component of the bug report, which is priority. Priority in the context of project management and issue tracking refers to the order in which tasks, issues or bugs are addressed or resolved. It's a critical aspect of managing work effectively, ensuring that the most important and time-sensitive items are handled first. The selection of priority for a task, issue or bug depends on various factors and should involve a thoughtful process. It can vary depending on the organization's processes and the specific context. The assignment of priority should be passed on clear criteria, such as business impact, user needs, urgency and technical feasibility. Many organizations use priority categories, for example high, medium, low, to standardize and simplify the prioritization process. Common roles involved in assigning priority include product managers or product owners, project managers, development teams, and quality assurance teams. In many cases, priority is determined collaboratively by key stakeholders involved in the project or task. Usually on the project, product managers or product owners are responsible for defining the overall product roadmap and priorities. They work closely with stakeholders, gather requirements, and assign priority to features and tasks based on strategic goals, user needs, and market demands. Also, often, if it's the work of a project manager, project managers oversee the planning and execution of projects. They may work with product managers and stakeholders to establish project priorities and ensure that tasks are aligned with project objectives and timelines. Developers also play a crucial role in prioritization as they can provide insights into technical feasibility, effort required, and dependencies that affect the sequencing of tasks. QA analysts or testers often identify and report bugs and issues. They may assess the severity of bugs but might not assign priority. However, they can provide valuable input on the impact of issues. Let's add the priority of our bug report. Our priority field consists of high, medium, low options. You can choose any option, for instance, medium, as it's usually not the responsibility of a QA engineer. Let's move on to the next component of a bug report, which is assignee. The assignee of a bug report is the individual or team responsible for addressing and resolving the reported bug or issue. The assignee is typically someone with the skills and expertise required to investigate, diagnose, and fix the problem. Most often, this is either the developer who implemented the feature or there are business representatives who must determine priorities. However, this can be influenced by SDLC, project rules, and other factors. For instance, if you have just joined the project as a trainee, and you are unsure whom to assign the bug to, you can assign it to the QA lead. The QA lead, who is well acquainted with the team of developers, managers and customers, will then determine the appropriate assignee for your issue. The assignment process may vary from one organization to another and can depend on the team's structure, processes and tools in use. Regardless of the assignee, clear communication and documentation of bug assignments are essential to ensure that the right person or team takes responsibility for resolving the issue. If you are unsure whom to assign the bug to, you recommend left it assigned or assign it to QA lead. So, in this video we have covered how to write 8 components of the bug reports that are Title Summary Steps to reproduce, actual result, expected result, attachments, environment, bug severity and priority, SNE. Remember that bug reports can vary in terms of their specific fields and the information they collect depending on the bug tracking system or project management tool in use, as well as the organization's processes and preferences. 
That's all from our site. If there are topics that you would like to see, write a comment or a question to the lecture. We hope to see you in the next video.